Okay. Hey, all right, here we are. <clears throat> Pete, Jay, and I leaving town for the first time in a long time, man. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be good to get out of town finally. Yeah, like you said, we've been here for a long time, so. Yeah, there's Dallas right behind us in the rear view. <laughs> Actually, we're taking off from Love Field today. All so, right. So we're really close to the downtown. Um, the downtown. Uh, this is the airport. That's, it's sort of like the. It's it, it's to Dallas what Midway is to Chicago. Like the second ah. airport. Yeah. And it's in close to the downtown area. And we're on Southwest. So it's just economy flying. <laughs> Which I'm surprised because after that last game, we really put on a show. I would have thought they would have rolled out the uh, right carpet for us. Right. And what the heck is that about? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so the, for the usually the first portion of the flight, we talk about um, what's it called? Stuff. <laughs> we talk previous about game, right? Yeah. Yeah. So right. I'm looking at something here real quick, just trying to make sure I understand. Okay. Yeah. This is good. This is good. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so how about the previous game? So, yeah, so first of all, the people on my channel, the previous game's not even there. <laughs> the last game I had was the Wide Lows in town, and then uh, the Saw Teeth came in town, and it was it was a rematch from earlier in the season. We went out and fought them in Big and it was back and forth, and we ended up on top. And then they come in here, and I had a bunch of technical issues. Actually, my power ended up going out in the middle yeah. of... In the middle of the broadcast they're on the sixth inning so my whole recording got dumped so yeah go over to pete underscore j he's got that game up there and uh what you want to you want to give a recap it was a good game it was about it was it was a really good game it was a back and forth battle the uh ramblers never uh never let up um even though the saw teeth got out to an early lead the ramblers hang held in there um they look shaky at times, and they'd give up some runs, but then uh, then they'd hold tight, and they'd be able to climb back in. And it was a it was a really good game, back and forth battle, like I say. Um, yeah. Well worth watching. Yeah, it's over at Pete underscore J uh, on YouTube, and uh, there's if you can't find it up on, just up on the page, check out the playlist. It's uh, I can't remember 2024 Ramblers first season. I think it's called is the playlist. So uh, yeah, check it out. It was good. Cool. Yeah, and just let you, you folks know this flight isn't going to be that that long. This this portion of the travel series, the, the flight out. So, because um, uh, it, it's a couple, we're yeah. So we're talking about this one, and we'll talk a little bit about. We, we never got to, for the yeah. So anyway, yeah, it was back and forth. I'm sorry, I'm bouncing all over with my thoughts. <laughs> um, uh, you know, we, I think I can't remember if we took the lead. They took it back. We took it back again, and yeah, we ended up on top so we actually beat them both times this season which is is funny um and they were they were great games you never know what you're going to get with this team though pete and right at, at the at the halfway mark there was a few things that we were going to do we didn't do yet um and a few big a few big changes first of all the biggest one uh you know the team was together really the whole season um with no changes and then finally after that that last game that that Jet Dapper threw, um, I guess management's patience wore a little thin with him, and he was he was let go. Yeah, I mean Jet Jet's a good guy, and we wish him all the luck. But uh, he just has not has not done well on the mound for us this year, and um, we have two major major problems, and that's pitching and speed. And so um, after the performance. Uh, that Jet Dapper put up in his last game, it was it was time I think to 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 make a move in one of those areas, and they decided to make it in the pitching area, and they brought in a left-hander, which is something that the uh, bullpen needs. Yeah, and I mean this this team this team is an offensive team. We actually, I mean, we're dominating, and we'll talk about it in a minute too. Um, the the league leaders. There's another thing I wanted to kind of go over um, at the halfway mark, but we just didn't have time, so we can go over some of that today or to, on this flight out here tonight it's a night flight um but uh um we win when we have just insane amounts of offense and if we don't if we have just like a regular offensive performance like any other team we get beat badly because like you said that defense isn't there the speed's not there the pitching's not there um and yeah so they felt 
management felt like they had to make a move. You can't have a team that's one game over 500 at the end of the, you know, at the end of the halfway mark and say, yeah, well, that'll get us to playoffs. You know, they got to show they're doing yeah. something. And Jet Dapper seems Litter ride. To, yeah. Litter ride. <laughs> <laughs> Jet Dapper was kind of the low hanging fruit. Uh, his ERA had, had climbed up and was struggling for a while. And they kept, I think the last couple times they put him in, they thought, well, let's see. Maybe he could turn this thing around, and he didn't. He didn't even whittle it back a little. It just hung there. And yeah, yeah, and he got. He came out and just got. He got shelled. Yeah. Uh, they were looking. At, they they were look. They needed to replace him before they could even officially replace him. Yeah. <laughs> he, had, he had to be in for at least a certain number of innings, and so and they, the decision was made to pull him even before he had reached that. So yeah, he just struggled. Um, our our rotation isn't the best in the league. We've got uh, uh, Tobias Glover, we got Fernando Beefy, but they're both B minus ranked, so they're not. They even they aren't the great shakes, you know. Right. Uh, and after you get past Fernando Beefy, uh, you got Jet Dapper and Jeff Benson, and and yeah, they're they're they have some really shaky performances. So um, they bring in a, they bring in a, a left hander, Mitch Berry. He's a, he's a B ranked, so um, he immediately goes to the top of the the head of the class, so to speak. And uh, yeah. and again, bringing in a left hander, you start to add some variety to that rotation. So uh, hopefully, uh, we haven't seen him pitch yet, and uh, I don't think we're gonna. Do we see him tonight? No, no. Uh, no. Tobias, Tobias Glover is going to be playing uh, in Baltimore here against the Jacks. And then uh, we come home for two. Uh, it, yeah, it's the top three. So we come up for two. Next, it's um, Beefy. Okay. And, and then finally, um, what, what's the new guy's name again? Mitch Berry. Yeah, Mitch Berry. Yeah, who's now the best pitcher on the team. Yeah. Yeah, he'll he'll yeah. come in for that second home game. Um, and, uh, yeah, so he'll get, at least he'll get to start off at home in front of the fans. That will, yeah, that will help him out. He'll get a, he'll get a nice uh, round of applause, I'm sure. And uh, I'm surprised that the uh, coaching staff hasn't adjusted the rotation. Um, but I'm also glad that they left uh, Glo- Glover as number one and Beefy as number two. Although you can make a case that Beefy might need to be number one. <laughs> He's yeah. been pitching so well. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess they'll they they've got. I think they've got the rotation set, so they're working on like who's tired and stuff and who's well rested. I mean, and right. I think yeah, what whatever it is. I mean, we can. I think we can mess with that, but um, but yeah, I don't know if I don't I don't know if it's important or not. I'm not sure what the, what to see how it goes. Well, hopefully he has a good showing in his first his first game. But and I would imagine I would imagine it's not going to be the only move we see this season, but. Um, but it is at the halfway mark. It is a winning team. So again, you know, you can understand management doesn't want to. You don't want to mess too much up. I think you want to make some fine-tuned course adjustments. To make sure and and with a with a new team like this too, you're not even. You know, you're hoping you're hoping for something big within the first three seasons. You're not. Uh, you know, you don't want to throw something out and then find out. Oh man, that was that was one of our best guys. Now we got to we got to work the next season undoing that mistake. You know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> it's tough. It's not an easy job folks. <laughs> no, no. And the management has tried to do, uh, you know, has tried to let it play out and, and given, uh, I think all the Rambler players, uh, the benefit of the doubt and tried to play it out. And, uh, I think they'll continue to do so. I'd like to see them. Like you were saying, now that we've hit the halfway point, we're moving into the tail end. Uh, they've done a good job of staying close. They have a very difficult division this year, one of the best I think in the league, um, yeah. and yet they're still kind of hanging in. They're not. They haven't dropped out of contention. They they can still make a move here before the end of the season. And uh, I would imagine that uh, the front office is buzzing. You know, they're looking for that opportunity. Um, and as we said, they still need help in, in pitching. I'd like to see, uh, uh, with all due uh, respect to. Uh, uh, what's his name? What's our closer's name? Uh, oh, Twist Gutierrez. Yeah, Twist Gutierrez. I again, I, I'd like to get more of a lockdown closer. He's and he is not one. Uh, I'd like to see more speed. Again, I think uh, as Tom said, they're a very offensive team, but they hit into a lot of double plays because they just can't steal a base. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so if you could get if you could get that stolen base and get out of that double play situation, you're going to put yourself in, uh, but more scoring. You know, more scoring situations, pick up more runs, and and uh, that's the name of the game. Yeah. Um, so let's 
so I was thinking again, talking about some of the mid-season stuff. Now, this is really mid. We're a game past mid-season, but this is kind of where we stand on things. Um, look, bringing up the current season leaders. When you look at the current season leaders, <clears throat> the third third from the top is Immaculate Spectacular. So, um, you know, we're going to face him. We may face him. I don't think. Well, he's not a starter. What, is he? Spectacular is a reliever, isn't he? I don't know. I'm not sure. Well, any. Anyway. 29 strikeouts still in 35 innings pitched, oh, so, so he must be a starter. That's, it kind of sounds like a lot, unless yeah. they're using him a lot. Well, I think we're starting. What was it, Donk? Oh, I'm not sure who we're facing. I don't think it's spectacular. But, well, thankfully, they're, yeah, this yeah. third best ERA on that list. It's not the, no, it's not actually Dracula's got a lower ERA, but it's, yeah, it's got. So does, so does Verde. Yeah, but he's got a low batting average against 156, 35 innings pitch in 29 KCS, yeah, so he's spectacular, formidable. Um, but then we've got three of the top 10, you know, for two Yeah, wins. we do. One win above, no, we're two, now actually we're two wins above 500 now, aren't we? Because we were 10 and 9, and now we're 11 and 9, I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's all the home runs they're hitting, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The home runs they're hitting is what's contributing to it, so uh, good yeah. good on them for doing that. Yeah, and you can see it, McLean, Heath, and Huerta. So, you know, we figured McLean and Heath, uh, where those three of those guys all hitting well above 400, which is yeah. insane. Uh, kind of batting averages that we have. Six home runs, eight home runs, six home runs, 20 RBIs, 16, 14. Well, he's been walked nine times. I know. Well, he's he, like you know we've talked about it during the game. He he's a dangerous hitter, and uh, he'll you know he'll get a hold of one early in the game. And uh, you've brought it up time and time again. Then they get they get afraid to throw to him. They they, they yeah. try to stay away from him as much as possible. And uh, more often than not, that means a, a free base for Swindle Heath. Yeah. Um. For then for batting, look at we have half we have half of the top ten. This is this is insane. Corbin Huerta, No McLean, Swindle Heath, Repo Reeves. It's only to get to the fifth batter that that it's someone who's not a rambler, and then it goes right back to Kid Paul. So yeah, uh, really hit, hitting lights out. Yeah, we are. I'm, I'm wondering if maybe we gotta up our offense, our our batting. Oh, you mean the the difficulty? Ego, yeah. Yeah, I'm up for that. They used to used to used to be able to split it like that. I don't know if we. I, I, I mean, do you want to just try and and upgrade the whole thing and just go up to like 58 or 59? Sure. But yeah, that those batting averages are insane. That's yeah, yeah, it's a bit much. <laughs> yeah, we an entire team of just you know 400 hitters. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, and then home run swindle. He's tied. It looks a four-way tie with our old friend Handley Dex, Bihan, Musto, and Harmony Strauss. Yeah, and then we, and then we get again. We have four of the top ten in home runs. Our yeah. guys, no McLean third. Um, not seeing other. What's their names? I'm not seeing. Uh, oops. Wrong Jax. One. Yeah, Jax on there. Um, when you go to uh, what is it here? Fade this one in. Batting. Oh yeah, hits. No McLean and Corbin Wharton. Top. And again, five of the top ten. Yeah, so we have to. Yeah. <laughs> Extra base hits. See, this is for just as much for us as it's for anybody else. But well, Heath, uh, 15 extra base hits. Jude Benitez is the only one who has more. On the Sawfish, or is, yeah, the Swordfish from all team. They have two. Yep. Wade Hobbs is on there. He's not even playing for anybody right now. They cut him loose, huh? Did he offend a coach? <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. That seems to be the popular, popular reason for somebody getting dumped. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see here. We're gonna get our, our drinks, and then. Wade gonna... Hobbs did he played for? Wasn't he playing for the wide loads? I think he was playing for the wide loads. They cut him the day after. He played us. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know why you do that. Maybe they had to save money. Uh, yeah, I don't know. But anyway, all right. Getting our drinks, folks. We'll be back here as we make our approach into Baltimore. Be right back. All 
All right. We got our seat seats up, trade our trade tables and whatever, all that stuff. This is Baltimore off our right wing there as we're making our final approach. You can kind of see we came back over. Is that the Chesapeake Bay or whatever that is? And uh, putting our flaps down. We're coming in. So we got a couple other of these things to talk about. I'm going to bring up this little graphic right char. Once I put my map away. Okay, here we go. And I'll bring this up. Um, Yeah, pitching then too as far as pitching goes. Uh, you know, we don't have the best the best pitchers in the league, but Fernando Beefy's tied for second for wins. Yeah, he's he's been playing he's been pitching really well so far this season. Hopefully he'll be able to continue that throughout the rest of the season. Um Yeah, so he's been money. Like I say, that's that's uh, one of the good things. Tobias Glover's been there too, but uh, just I don't think Glover's gotten the run support that Beefy has gotten. Right. And then and then Elaine Munstar is there for the for the Jacks and then uh, Maculus Spectaculo, um, also and then we got for saves Boral Libel Danny Uppers both had two saves which is which isn't bad at all either it's good good for them uh, I've yeah got... look, little bumped in with four yeah <laughs> okay one more graphic to show you this one is the what's it called here oh yeah the other other pitching what is this oh strikeouts the strikeout run yeah slips out or leading at thirty seven. But then Fernando Beefy at 30. And Boral Ibel at 29. So a lot of keys. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, be like you say, Beefy and Reliable have been uh, very, very good on the bump um, this season. So uh, very hard to hit, which has yeah. come in handy. Like I said, we talked about that. We need we, we need more of that shutdown type relief pitching. Uh, unfortunately, Boral Reliable is a starting pitcher, starting slash relief pitcher. Yeah. Um, so he's kind of more long relief. Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess he would do pretty well in the short relief situation if we needed him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So maybe we start thinking in those terms that if if uh, Leland Bull comes, that we bring him in, maybe Danny Yuppers, then we can go to Bore Reliable as as a, kind of a uh, a secret closer. You know. Yeah, that's true. Although I do want to give Twist another opportunity or two to try and. You really good. Has he? Has we developed? Have we developed Twist at all? In- I I don't think so. He hasn't really played all that much. He, I mean, he, the other thing because he um, let's see. I think he's pitched in four games. He's had two good outings and two bad ones. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And then because our starting pitching has been so bad, we're usually looking at long relief and then medium relief, and they're not usually not tired when we get to the ninth. Um, so we don't think about bringing twist in. I, in my head, it's always like, okay, well, I'm going to go with this one, and if they give up the single, if they start to struggle, I'll go to twist then. Right. And they don't. They just they, they they three up, three down in the ninth, and you're like, oh, okay, well, I guess we didn't need them. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. I especially don't know. with the, especially now with the designated hitter rule. Yeah, yeah. Because if it was a situation where we get to the uh, bottom of the eighth inning. You know, and the pitcher comes up. Well, yeah, go ahead and pull the pitcher, pinch hit, see if you can get a rally going in the eighth. If not, it doesn't matter. We'll bring a twist and let him close out the game. But because the designated hitter rule, the pitcher never comes up, so it just it's not an issue. You know? Right. It's just yeah. And I'm always I always struggle with knowing when to bring in the closer too, because it's like I always think, well, what happens if you got then he tires out and you're still playing. You know, and then you right. go, I guess you, you could always go back to another reliever, but uh, we we should use right. it more often than we do. Well, yeah, especially if we're talking about um, evaluating if the if he's going to be the closer uh, for the, the for the future of the Ramblers. Right, right, true. You can't yeah. evaluate him if he's sitting on the bench. No, they can't. Ooh, oh, that's a big oh, one. oh. <laughs> a little hard there, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, a touchdown here in Baltimore. So uh, I'm excited to play at Peril Point, the new stadium. We, we do. Have do. Yeah, yeah, I've never seen that one. So I'm looking forward to getting in there, seeing what the uh, what the place looks like and uh, how it plays. Yeah. I think it's pretty deep, isn't it? It's a pretty deep ballpark. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know. I guess we'll find out. I mean, looks like it'll be a fun place to play. Good, And these, and these guys, they're not doing well. We stop before we get in here. <laughs> uh, we gotta get this runway, people. 
Um, I was gonna say, just open the door. I'll walk. I can. Yeah. I see my car from here. I can see my car over there. <laughs> there's a rabbit. There's a rabbit on it. <laughs> <laughs> Running across. The, uh, yeah. But there's a bear actually on the side. That's California. Yeah. I was gonna say. I mean, kind of like that paint job. Yeah. California but, flag, isn't it? Yeah. Um. Yeah. So uh, as yeah, so we taxi the gate, what was I gonna say? Barrel point. Oh yeah, I think these guys are like seven and twelve. They're third place okay. in their division. They're they're a little ways out, and we're a game and a half out. So we have the the moose are at the top, or at least as we're seeing this now. I mean, there's other games going on right now that we're gonna find out about. But the moose at the top, the um, the wildcats right behind them, half game back, and we're I think a game behind the wildcats, or like a game and a half back. Uh, so yeah, this this next game is gonna be a battle of the third place teams. This is gonna make it to uh, major air time, <laughs> but uh, but we're you know we're to, we should we should win this game and especially with right. with um, Tobias Glover on the mound, we really got to mess it up to lose it. Yeah, you would think so. I mean, coming off of the te- uh, the uh, the tests that we've had in the past couple of games and and how we fared, um, again, I think we were up against the best team. Uh, in the league at the time, I can't remember who was that. It was the uh, um, wide loads. No, uh, the wide loads pounded us. No, who did the, we play the before? Montreal Wax Bills. Yeah, the Wax Bills, um, and we we gave them a pretty good game. And then the wide loads came into town and just it just hammered us. Uh, and then we we had a shootout against the the Sautis. So we've been playing some pretty good baseball as of late. Um, we talked about it before. There's um, there are a lot of kind of uh, uh, at the risk of sounding bad, uh, a lot of bad divisions yeah. in the league this season. Yeah. Um, a lot of bad divisions where the second place teams are, are below 500, which, you know, that I don't understand that, but um, that's not us. We have, we have a, a, all you know, I think we're all of our teams in our division have a, a above 500 record. So, uh, yeah, so we may be in third place. The Jacks may be in third place, but it may be a whole different third place <laughs> than, right. than, uh, than what they're looking at. So, um, yeah, I think if we come out, we play the game where we're, we know we can play and we've proven we can play in the last two out of three games. We get a pitching performance from uh, Tobias Glover that we know, you know, which is typically a, a good performance. Uh, yeah, I think we should win this game. I think we should win every game. That's why... Yeah. Uh, you know, same thing we talked as we talked about when we took off uh, out of te- Texas was uh, bringing Mitch Berry in. We got a, now we got a third starter that hopefully we're going to get some good starting pitching out of, and and that will help us hopefully put some more wins in the win column. Yeah, and it's tough too. We we're talking about you know the difficulty level. It's like well, we're we're getting we're hitting so well we got up the difficulty, but at the same time we're not we're not winning them. The ball. Well, we're only two all games right. ahead of, but it's so good. All right, we gotta grab our bags and get to the hotel. <laughs> but yep. uh, game tomorrow, and so uh, yeah, thanks for hanging in with us, there, folks. Uh, catch us pretty soon. We're gonna be at Peril Point against these um, the Jacks, and then we're gonna head back to Dallas. And uh, I forget who we're playing there, but we'll do that again. All right, yep. bye, bye, folks. Bye.